Hi everyone, it's Maria Recruit here. It's the Maria Recruit and Samantha Glass uh, Real Estate Show. Hi Sam, nice to see you again. This is our second show and it's uh, all things real estate and all things law. And basically we're doing this show to have questions come in. How have you been, Samantha? How has your week been? Oh, it's been great. Busy, busy um, with all the changes, Bill 184, tons of yeah. discussions at the Landlord Self-Help Center. Uh, oh, about sweet. going forward. So just been a busy week in the landlord and tenant world and yes. the legal world, anticipating that the courts may open maybe, maybe at the end of July or the end of August. Good, good, good. That's good news. That's good news. But I guess for Bill 184, because I was talking to Scott this afternoon about that, right? Yeah, we had a good discussion, the conundrum of what it actually means for all of us. But you're very enthusiastic, which is fantastic. I love that. Your enthusiasm is very catchy, by the way, Samantha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, so you're excited to get back into the field of uh, your paralegal work again? I am because I want to see results for people, and yes. and for far too long, people are are you know I want I want to give them hope, but I don't want to give them false hope, and yes. and it's just that's that's what it is. I mean, it comes down to mediation negotiation, but sometimes that can only go far so far when if people yes. are not willing. Mm -hmm. um, to even go down that road. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to start giving people resolutions, utilizing yes. the court process. So oh, it's about time. It's happening soon. I mean, we, yes. we hear, we hear um, you know, depending on what the government says, could be the end of this month, could be the mm -hmm. end of August. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping, I don't see it being the end of July, mm -hmm. but the end of August would be a great, yes. a great thing for many. Yeah, getting ready for the 1st of September because there's many people that like to move on September the 1st. I mean, that's the time when people move, 1st of September and 1st of May. So that's the biggest number of people that move around Ontario. I don't know about the rest of the world, but in Ontario, that's when they do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, my, so, that's so my, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, Sam. You're yeah, cooking clock. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's oh, it calms me. I've had that since I was a child. My mother always had a clock, right? Just like the chimes, that. they calm me, you know, and the rain calms me. And I'm having a glass of wine. I've had about six to eight shows today. I know you've oh, got your water. I know yeah. I've produced six to eight shows today, but cheers to you, Sam. I know you've got two waters. Three waters, everybody <laughs> cheers. You got to stay hydrated in this heat, right? That's so. right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just um it's a crazy world out there and i mean we did this real estate seminar on tuesday and uh we were talking a lot of, about rent to owns and we were yeah. talking about good about good and you know I, I was really really impressed with um my presenters but one of the things that really impressed me was the mindset discussion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so yeah. you know i'm trying to say this to my landlords i'm trying to say it to investors you know, we 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 ha we can only deal with the cards that we're dealt with right now, and we, if we yeah. can't change it, it sucks. It's unfortunate, but mm -hmm. we have to be able to stay positive in this in this rough time mm -hmm. and know that it's going to get better. Now, sure. I've seen questions out there. I've seen uh, Nav. I, I know that Nav knows you, mm -hmm. um, and Nav is uh, you know flipping for profits, and he. Yes. Um, yes. It's interesting. He asked a question about what's the world going to look like. What's the landlord intent? There's going to be a lot of evictions out there. Yes. Oh, yes. And, you know, it, that's the biggest question is what will happen when, yeah. when everything's opens up, mm -hmm. what is going to happen? What, how are we going to see this? What is the legal landscape going to look like? And, yes. and Maria, I think yes. this is a great topic for us to discuss because, you know, how do we want it to look? That's the first question. And then what do we think it actually is going to look like? So what do you, I mean, what have you been hearing? What do you want to see uh, this, the legal landscape look like from the, the, board, the board's perspective? Well, you know what? I mean, we have to move along these evictions. I mean, you've got to help the landlords out. They're going to lose their houses if they, you know, if they haven't been smart enough to defer the mortgages or for some reason they're not able to. But myself as a landlord, I've deferred it for a second time. So it's going to be six months I'm deferring. But yeah. I must, and, and then I've refinanced one property. So, I mean, to pull money out, equity, so I can use it to keep going through. But I must say one good thing, Samantha's happened is I'm getting really good tenants that are going to be moving into my homes long term. So that's really good. These are really good, solid people. Uh, they have not been affected by what's going on. They have, you know, I've talked to their landlords. They've been paying. They're great tenants. So I'm getting the right people. I'm getting my 
avatar that I need, the person who I want to see in my homes. Myself, my short-term rentals, I'm not bothering with them at all. Like I've got, I mean, I even got some people wanting to come to stay at my short-term rentals, but I don't want to do it at this point. Yeah. Uh, because of cleaning, uh, because I'm a senior, the cleaners are senior, and I'm not going to hire somebody else out of the blue. I don't know. And it, quite frankly, uh, half the season's gone anyways. The yeah. season's gone already. So what do I have to do? So I'm just switching over from short term to long term, and I'm getting yeah. good people for that too. So, I mean, I'm looking at my business model is changing, and I'm okay with it, Sam, because if I can get the same amount of money or the, a good amount of money without having to do all that extra work at my age as a senior, I'm ready for that. And I'm looking at other things, different types of real estate strategies outside of owning property, but owning mm -hmm. other things doing things a little bit differently, but still making money with real estate. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm changing. I'm going to be changing my business. I'm going to be changing the way I do business. Real estate is always there, will always be. And I'm going to be moving into another sector of real estate where I can see good potential, where I don't have to deal with tenants, which yeah. is the one thing. Not that I've had a you know, in 20 years, I haven't had really bad tenants. And now I have no bad tenants. I've had only good tenants that are paid. But I want more than that, right? I want to do things a little bit differently. So that's yeah. how I see it. Yeah, I agree with you. I just and and that's something that scares me because you're, you're talking, you're a senior, you know, my parents are seniors. And they they've talked about this with me, you know, what what do we do? What do we do? Yes. We've done this for like 40 years. You yes. know, all we've done is build a portfolio where thank God, like they have decent tenants. There's one problem yeah. in all the units of yeah. all of them yeah. and so far paying the rent. But they asked that question to me, you know, mm -hmm. teams aren't getting, they're not getting funding. They're not getting proper funding yes. from the government. Yes. And it, it, it's, complicated, it's complicated. Right. So what do you do as an investor that's a senior if you can't refinance? What do you do? Oh, I, I'm able to refinance. I actually just did it. So it's yeah. private financing, private refinancing. I was able to get that in the middle of COVID. Think about that. In the middle of COVID-19, I was able to do it. So That's you amazing. can do it. Uh, maybe your parents have to go to a mortgage broker, not go to the bank. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so that's a, yeah. that's a great, that's a great thing. Like I know we had a, there's a mortgage broker that I know, uh, Mr. Victor Ha. And, you know, mm -hmm. I asked him that question too. You know, what are you doing to help seniors? What are we yes. doing? Let's look at it from the perspective of those that like, we have to understand not all landlords out there in the investment world are rich. Like I know there's no. this perception that, Hey, landlords have deep pockets. Yeah. So yeah. Let's make the laws in favor of the tenants as, as opposed to landlords because landlords are rich. And that's not true, right? Let's no. be realistic here. It's not true. No. Some of them are just doing it to make an ex some extra income maybe, but really, yeah. Yeah. Some of them don't even increase their rents and or they've inherited the property from someone else. So they're just they just keeping it going. And I think that's where this beautiful organization, Landlord, Ten Landlord Self-Help Board, comes into play with the assistance to these low income or small landlords. Right. Because people when you hear it, low income landlord. What do you mean, you know, legal aid actually was funding the, or is still funding uh, the landlord self-help because there are low income landlords. Yes, and sure there are. Yeah. Right. Sure. So sure. Seniors, you know, it's, it's a, that's a whole topic and on its, on its own, but I'd love to hear the perspective from some of your other experts as mm -hmm. to what are they doing to help seniors? Yes. Right. What are we doing? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And are we, are, you know, if, are these seniors going to lose their properties that they've had for 40 years due to a bad tenant that may not pay the rent? Right. I hope not. If you know, I, I and I've been saying this, preaching this since uh, the middle of March, that you need to defer your mortgage. And I've mm -hmm. deferred it for a second time. So the landlord should be able to defer their mortgages and then refinance. Right. Either get a, uh, a new first or get a, a second or get a third. But refinance, put the money in the bank so you won't lose your house. There's no yep. reason to lose your house because of a friggin' tenant that's not paying the rent. That's the wrong reason to lose a house for, right? We have to have, you know what? Again, we're going to do, we're going to say this again, Samantha. This is a business. You've yeah. got to learn the basics of business. And I want to tell you something. Before I went on my show with Scott and you and I both love Scott very much, you know, we love respect Scott. him. Yeah. And yes. he's fabulous, right? I mean, he's got such a brain and he knows so much. Um, and, and just before <laughs> I was getting ready to have him on my show, doesn't a paralegal, a very famous paralegal, send me a message? And he hasn't sent me a message in months. He says, Maria, he says, what's going on with the landlords? I have a course. I have a webinar. A webinar. That's free. 
about Bill 184 and no one's coming to listen to it. I yeah. said, you know what? This is what I'm noticing. We're all noticing this, that the landlords aren't doing their due diligence. They're not learning. They're not educating themselves, Samantha. They're not educating themselves. I've got yeah. 83 videos about all educational. There's a minority that yeah. go there and watch them. What's wrong with them? You tell me what's wrong with them. You know, it's it comes down to this. We, we see this happen um, quite often. Can you hear me? Uh, now I can. If you go in and out, yeah, just try it again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we see this, and I'm I'm not here representing the landlord self help center. I I do sit yeah. on the board of directors, yeah. but you know, we un, we I know I that know. like my, when I was a child, landlord self help center existed, and they've mm -hmm. always been there to educate. And I I think that. You know, if you look at all the resources around you, there's a wealth of knowledge yeah. and yeah. people are not looking at the right venues for knowledge. I yeah. think people don't yeah. have patience and that is why they'll go on a Facebook page or on Google and just type in their question and hope to get the answer. Yeah. And yeah. the problem is that, again, you know, it's not a one size fits all approach that you can take to any legal yeah. situation. Every situation is different. So this individual you're talking about, I, I think I know who he is, yeah. but if, if it is who I think it is, yeah. the man is very knowledgeable. I and know. Doing, I know. And I have to tell you, I've taken his course. So <laughs> <laughs> knowledge, like being a landlord, if, if you're in a business, like you have to think about it. If you are not keeping a pulse on what's going on, then expect things to happen and expect the boat to leak. Yes. Right? If you're letting the boat leak, then basically what you're doing is you're flushing money down the toilet. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to flush money down the toilet? Don't you want that money to go on vacation and, you know, mm -hmm. make your life easy, especially, you know, uh, people talk about this. Oh, I, I want residual income. You want residual income. Yeah. Take care of the unit. You have to put effort yeah. into the unit. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. go and renovate when the tenant says, give me the whole brand new unit. I'm saying yeah. follow the, all you have to do is simply follow the act. The act is not very complicated. It yeah. tells you yeah. your responsibilities. There's a section in the act that says that. And it's a matter of, guys, if you don't want to listen to the video, go on yeah. the landlord tenant board website and read some of their guides. It's in the guides. So I, I feel that people are lazy, and I'm yes. sorry. For any yes, minutes they are. Are. No, they are. Um, I mean, that's, that's my conclusion, okay? Yeah. Since, since, well, because we've been, how many months have we had the problem with the, with the people can't evict the tenants? How many months have they had all this free time? How many people have gone and watched the videos that you and I have produced even a, a, a year ago, the radio shows? How many people have listened to it? You were giving good advice then. You're still giving good advice now. Who's listening to us, right? So, right. I mean, really, I mean, if you're not going to do what it takes, then I guess you're going to, like they say, like, if you've always done what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that comes back to mindset. It, it, to me, this all ties into personal development mindset. Yes. And yes. honestly, you know, you want to be a rich landlord. Well, you know, yes. things don't come for free. Okay. Yeah. So yes, you're getting the free education, but think mm -hmm. if you don't even want to take the step towards getting free education, then yes. that's, the problem. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, listen, I'm a very sensitive person and very caring. And my clients will tell you that, that I am yes. the first person to be there when they're crying to give them a hug. That's the kind of person I am. So yeah. when I'm being very blunt like this, it's only because I'm seeing and I'm hearing, I'm getting the calls daily where yeah. people are saying silly things to me that don't make any sense. And it, yeah. it's very, very alarming because I want to help them, but I can't, some problems I can't, un like I can't fix them. There's yeah. things that if you do it wrong, you cannot go back. That's so right. That's right. That. You know, take advantage of, of Maria's shows, all the shows, all the effort that she puts in. She, you know, I know you like doing it. Yes. I know that there are people that do watch it, but I think more people need to be aware that this, this is a place where people are volunteering their time to yes. give information, yes. really with not looking for anything in return. No, no. Uh, and I, no. Come on, I come on here just for the joy. I love to talk. I so you I, love, to, like, I, love to, I love to have you. I love to have you. I mean, you're one of my first guests on my radio show. <laughs> I mean, that was Amazing. like two years ago. No, a year ago, you know. And then before that, uh, Jen and I had, you remember we did shows together with Jen, Jen and I got you. It was so, so much fun. The three of yeah. us just laughed through the whole thing. We had so much yeah. fun, you know. But yeah, yeah, it was all for education. I mean, you're an educator. I'm an educator. And I get frustrated too. I get frustrated when I heard from this paralegal and he told me that I got, got so frustrated. I mean, come he's on, not, you know, he's not yeah. wrong. He's, he's I again, I, again, 
I can imagine who it is, but if yeah. it's this person that I think it is, you know, yes. if this yes. person is selling a course, yeah. then you have to like, like think about why he has the right to add money to that course. Because the yes. person that I think that it is, is a person that's been doing it for a very, very, very long time. Absolutely. You know, whatever the money is, you like, there's always a saying like, and it's Wallace D. Waddles, the science of getting rich, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you want to do things in a certain way. And if you want to do things in a certain way to achieve success, you need to mm -hmm. copy what they're doing. And this yes. person knows what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But he even, but most webinars are for free. Most webinars are oh, free. for free. I know. I, I know. So. I mean, he well, never sent me. He never sent me the link, so I don't know, right? I've been busy all day, so I don't yeah. even know when when it's supposed to be on. But I'm, I'm oh. sure it's for free. Webinars normally are free. I mean, I think so. But it doesn't matter. You it depends on who it is. It. Yeah. Yeah. It it depends depends on on it. Pay the money if you're that interested. If you really need to know, because it's your business, you invest in yourself. I mean, I know you, Samantha, are investing in yourself, just like I've been investing. Like I've been in business since 1982. I've been investing all about business since 1982. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, you know. And then when I went into real estate, I've invested with courses. I was just talking that I used to belong to um, Ron, Ron, Ronald Grand out of, I think he's out of Florida. He's a real estate investor that goes really into the, like a, a typical American goes really into things that are really out, out of out of this world, how they do it. But that's how he does his business, right? And, well, I paid for that course. I mean, I'm still paying for courses. I'm still belonging to groups. I mean, I want to be on top of what's going on. I want to hear other people's opinion, just like you are. You're doing that. Too. Yes. So I, I have to say that there are courses that I do pay for and there are courses that I yeah. don't pay for. Yeah. And the, the, how I select the ones that I pay for is the, it depends on who it is. Right. Yeah. So look, yeah. I, I might go to a free course and learn high level knowledge, but then I'm going to the free course to survey who the person is who's speaking yeah. to see yeah. if it's the person that I, I should learn more from. Mm -hmm. Give you, I'll give you an example, and I, I can see that my amazing mentor, I love calling him my mentor. I feel like he's my coach, and honest to God, I am so blessed to have this person in my life, Mr. Scott McEachern. I'm giving yeah. him a shout-out. Yeah, um, good. good. <laughs> this is an, an, he's an individual that I have to say, you know, if you don't know him, you should get to know him because yeah. he, has, he, he has the knowledge. He, he has the ability. What he says is not talking into the air. He's actually talking about think, like the actual law. He knows what he's doing. Yes. Whereas other people fake it till they make it, right? And I think yeah. that's the, that's what gives legal professionals a very bad name is that they think they know what they're talking about, but mm -hmm. they actually don't. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. need to do your due diligence as a landlord. Um, and I do that as, as both a landlord and a paralegal. And mm -hmm. in other instances, I'm yeah. always looking at who are the experts or who say that they are the experts in this industry and yeah. what makes them in the expert? What is their track record? Yeah. So there are probably about five paralegals in, that I can think of. Mm -hmm. That I know for sure know that when they say they know what they're doing, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, um, yeah. Yes. And and I think that's what landlords need to do. And and anybody, anybody that's dealing with a paralegal, we talked about this last time. How do you hire a paralegal? How yeah. do you know what questions to ask? And yeah. I thought about that since the last show, and it really comes down to you need to do the research. If yeah. they're nowhere to be found, or if they're a speckle on a map in the middle of nowhere, you probably are not gonna want to use them. No offense to that person that doesn't use uh, social media, maybe they, yeah. maybe they have referrals, yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah. you just have to be careful out there. And it's very, very important. It's very, very important to know uh, where to get that education. But uh, we're talking about that, but you're right. People are not even stepping forward that no. to get the education. No. No. And I'll, I'll take it a step further. I had someone get in touch with me on Sunday and uh, she, you know, like usually Sundays I don't do any business. If I do, it's my own stuff, but I could see she was a member of one of my associations. So I answered her and she got on the phone and she just came at me and just, just told me what was going on, right? Then mm -hmm. she said, then, then I stopped her and I said, look, I said, you need to accept, you need to talk to a paralegal, not me. And I said, I, even if I know, I'm not going to tell you anything. This is too dangerous to tell you anything right now. I really don't know how to do things. And I don't. I said, uh, you know, Samantha, myself, I don't want to know the law. That's not my business. I want my paralegal to know the law. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you want your paralegal, you know, if they don't know something, yeah. that they say to you, hey, Maria, I've never encountered that. Yeah. I'm going to get expert counsel. I'm going to find out and I'm going to come back and I'm not going to charge you to learn about that. Yeah, of course. Of course. And I think that's another thing that paralegals, and it's not just paralegals, it's any industry. People are 
are fighting for business and they are competing. They think it's a big competition, a big race. And to be honest with you, it's it, to me, I don't see anything as competition. I see no. it as collaboration. Let's work yeah. together. You know, and I talk about this quote all the time that my my, my dear friend and partner, uh, Kelly Chiasson, she says this, you know, you can go alone, but you can't grow alone. And I've yeah. always believed in that. And I think that my industry needs to learn, learn a little bit more about what that means. And hey, I'm sorry, I love my industry. I have to tell yeah. you, this profession is me. This is what I love to do. And I yeah. love educating and helping people and getting justice for people utilizing yeah. the laws that we have. Yeah. Yes. But we need to look at, the, what is the greater good? And that's that's the greater good is really, you don't know, ask somebody else that does know and don't be ashamed to ask, yes. right? Yes. Same with the landlords, ask each other, but yes. be careful that you don't rely on it because you don't know if they even know. You have to do yeah. your research. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'll tell you something. I mean, I know what I need to know, but when I get into trouble or if I'm unsure, I call up my paralegal. So, so what happened was this lady, when I told her that, I don't think she was very happy. So she sends me, she doesn't even thank me for me listening to her and suggesting something. So she kind of slams the phone. It was on Messenger. And then she says, well, I didn't think it was that difficult. I said, you know what? It's not. But with the way things are right now with the land and tenant board and the tenants, I'm not going to give you advice. You can go. And I, and I suggested that they go to, not to you, but actually to Howard, because I know you're very busy. Howard Tab Rogers, which is he's another paralegal on my show. I said, call him up. He's not going to charge you. So I called uh, Howard yesterday. I said, has someone called you in my name? He says, no. So the lady didn't call him. And it was a free call. She preferred to listen to everybody else, except go where the answer was. I just handed her a solution. Do you think she took it? That's that's a big problem. Look, yeah. like I, I I have to say, you know, the ones that the ones that when you it, when you, ugh, what's that saying? You take you can take a horse to water, but you can't get them yeah, to drink. Make them to drink it. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. And so that's why I don't get involved anymore because really I'm wasting my time. I just spent ten minutes with you mm -hmm. trying to calm you down, trying to understand what was going on, and then said, look. I can give you the person who can help you because they know the law. I don't. And then she says, well, this is what my real estate agent said. I said, you don't listen to real estate agents. They don't know the law. You know, wow. I said, this, is, this is dangerous now with what's going on. Do you not understand how dangerous <laughs> it is? You know? Oh, my. You know, Maria, you bring up a very, very, uh, like, I want to segue into this topic about real okay. estate agents who, are, yeah. who I love dearly, guys. Like, I, I lecture to real estate agents at least yeah. two yeah. offices per week. Um, mm -hmm. They are my best friends. I love them. So let me say, I say it to okay. them, and I'm going to say it to the landlords. Yes, I understand that we trust our real estate agents because that's the person that helped us to get this property. I get it. Look, they are they are that connector. I, I feel they're the, mm -hmm. the central person that knows the answer to everything. Yeah. They know how to connect you with other people, but be yes. careful. They can only guide you to a place to get information. If yes. you're getting legal advice from your real estate agent, they better have a paralegal or, or a license to be a lawyer and practice law. Oh, they yeah. can't yeah. give you legal advice. Because what happens is, are you going to go to the board after they fill out the application for you and sign it for you, and then it gets thrown out because they are not allowed to put their name into that application? Yes. yes. Then you just yeah. wasted your time and money. And then think about it. If I, I've heard people say, well, my real estate agent, they said to, they said to the adjudicators, my real estate agent said this. Yeah. And I've heard many adjudicators say, your real estate agent, really? What standing do they have? Yeah. Are you a paralegal? Yeah. Okay. Don't ask them. So yeah, it's, yeah. be very, very careful that, that look, I love them. I know that they are very knowledgeable in many, many things, but they only should be your connection to a person that has a, holds a license. Yeah. Not the person yeah. that gives you legal Absolutely. advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Real estate agent can get you a good home, make the deal happen. That's it. That's where I stop. I have uh, legal problems, depending on what kind I go to my lawyer. Or yeah. I go to my paralegal. If I want to get a mortgage, I go to my mortgage broker. Do I go to my real estate agent and say, hey, do you have any money to lend me? I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. And I'm going to take this a step further because I know that um, Scott actually last week was on some real estate groups trying to help out with the information. And of course, you know about that. And they were just cutting him down. Well, well thought, this is the you thing know, everyone knows better, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so why even bother? Why even bother? 
Actually, I don't go. I, I don't actually go on those groups anymore. Once in a blue moon, I'll answer in my groups, but I won't go to others and, and not necessarily say anything because I don't want, I, I'm quite frankly, they're not going to listen anyway. So why am I spending my time? I've got to look. Where is the best use of my time, Samantha? Because I don't have that much time in a day anymore. I mean, I'm a senior and I have all this time, but I prefer to do things that are good for me now, right? You can only right. give so much. And then I have so many groups, as you know, so many associations, and you belong to a lot of them, that I have to share the information with them there. But I always say, Go to a paralegal. And I always, you know, if I if I if I they ask a question and I don't want to answer or I don't know and I don't want to know, then I'll you know, I'll highlight your name or I'll highlight um Howard's or Beta D. Yeah. 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 You know, because you guys are doing it every single day. I don't want to yeah. know what you're doing. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, except, when I'm in, except when I'm in trouble, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was I was going to add an additional analogy to what you said, and I use yeah. it on my 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 uh, personal development show, and I've heard my partner say it. You know, you don't ask your mechanic to do your your dental work. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Why are the Why are the uh, you know Why is a real estate agent uh, no agent Why is a real estate investor asking an agent what to do about the N four, the N five, and the L eleven? Like, I mean, because what's that all about, right? That people assume that the real estate agent should know that there's some expectation. And I can tell you in talkings with some of the brokers, that's what they say to me, that, that people, clients believe that it's, there's an expectation that the real estate agent knows all. They are the god of real estate and know all. And that's yeah. great. They do know a little bit of everything. I have to say there's some yeah. out there, like I mentioned Nav earlier. Nav, he knows a lot. You yeah. know, uh, Mr. Gordon So, Sabir, uh, Chawala. Yeah. Uh, Roy Cleves, and there's many that have been on your show that actually really know what they're talking oh, about. Yeah. But they know, they, they know that, like, I'll tell you, it doesn't matter how long they've been around, they will mm -hmm. always ask, they always have a paralegal and a lawyer sure. in their arsenal. They always do. And they, they pick up the phone, like, I get it all the time. Pick up the phone, he said, I have a two minute question. Can I ask you? Yeah, sure, no yeah, problem. Yeah. Ask me the question and, yeah. and let me give the advice because I hold yeah. the, in the insurance. I'm protected, you're not. So, yeah, why exactly. Why would you want to get sued because you gave wrong advice? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And even more so, it's more dangerous now than it was when I started 20 years ago and when your dad started 30 or 40 years ago. The, yeah. the, tenant, the uh, tenant profile has changed. It has. And the laws have changed. And it's becoming more and more difficult to evict people for various reasons. So, I mean, through time, the tenant has gotten more uh, rights. We have gotten less rights. So that's why it's imperative that people get the paperwork filled out properly and that they don't waste their time getting their paperwork thrown out of the land and tenant board. And now with the changes, everyone yes. needs to, what I, I'll tell you what I did, and this is a best mm -hmm. practice for those that, are, if, those that are watching or that's gonna watch yes. on the replay. Take yes. the old legislation and mm -hmm. compare it to Bill 184. You need to do a side by side. I'm telling you, you're going to start to see things. Um, I know our, our firm is going to be releasing information about it. I'm sure the Landlord Self-Help Center will do the same. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start seeing this everywhere because, look, if you're not aware of the changes, how do you know what you can and cannot do? You actually may have more rights than you think at this point. Okay. So, look, like, um, I hear, I'll tell you some of the top things that I'm seeing. I feel like saying the top 10 no-nos that let them yeah, Okay, go ahead. Tell us. <laughs> well, I'll do five because I don't know if okay. we have time for all 10. No, we, we probably don't because you've got, another, you've got another show coming up too, don't you, at 8 o'clock? Yeah, so I do yeah. a personal development yeah. show Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, for Mindset. It's very yeah. important for me. It's important for investors and businesses. So, yeah, 8 p.m. starts in about uh, 25 minutes. But let's, let's talk about these things. So yeah. the, the, the lovely N5, the N5 notice where, you know, you have – uh, a tenant that, for example, uh, has damaged the property or a mm -hmm. tenant who is affecting the reasonable enjoyment of another tenant or has issues with bylaw or, or um, I don't know, whatever issues they are. Use the N5, you fill it out, and there's a seven-day window in which the land, they have a time to correct it on the first N5. Landlord mm -hmm. must go back during mm -hmm. that seven-day window, day seven, to ensure that the tenant complied or did not comply. Mm -hmm. And I see them fail all the time. Guys, number one, read the notices. Why are you not reading the notices? <laughs> notice, go back. It says you must go back and confirm. Yeah. Uh, so this is a big problem, right? The other big problem that I see, and again, I'm not talking about Bill 184 because I know my 
Uh, Mr. Scott McEachern spoke yeah. about some of it earlier, yeah. and you're going to hear more about it. So I'm talking about yeah. it from a, from a perspective without that. Number yeah. two is, again, compensation. Again, read the notice. When is compensation due on an N12? Yeah. Is it yeah. due after the termination date? Like, I feel like I should do my quizzes here. Guys, you Let's be the judge. Why don't you do that? <laughs> you be the judge. True or false? Compensation yeah. on an N12 for landlord's own use, you can pay after the termination date. True or false? Post your comments in the comments. Yeah, section. that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> another another one. True or false? A notice, uh, an N4 non-payment of rent can be yeah. issued. If it's already issued, um, it doesn't have an expiry date. True or false? Post that in the comments section. I'd love to see answers here because there's a lot of misconceptions. Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, and 11s, you know, agree, agreement to uh, vacate property. Um, you know, it's supposed to be filed or nothing happens. So can I, I often hear uh, questions about is it absolute? So I should ask that question here. True mm -hmm. or false is an N11 agreement to vacate the unit, even though it's on agreement and the form is filled out mm -hmm. um, and you filed it with the board. Is it an absolute or can the tenant go back? and say, mm -hmm. oh, landlords forced me to sign it. Can they, can they reverse it, right? I love to hear answers, guys. I, I think these are, these are some of the top errors that happen because there's misconceptions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what did I give you? I gave, I think, three or four there. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Um, there's and plenty then, more. <laughs> oh, my God. I could be, I could be on here for hours with all of I that. Know. I know so that. I think, you know, people saying, oh, another one, I don't have to use a standardized lease. Okay. Yeah. You need to be very careful. Again, yes. Yes. you in writing on the website. Mm -hmm. Why are we not taking 10 minutes of our life mm -hmm. to read it and do it correctly? That's, that's all I ask, you know, yeah. and, and maybe, you know, and, and again, paralegals, we're problem solvers, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. our job is to help you when you're in hot water. Yeah. So, you know, that's when, and I, and I, listen, I feel for Howard because I'm like Howard, I, yeah. I do these these free consultations, because all I want to hear is what you did, what you thought you were supposed yeah. to do and how you rectified it. Yeah. I want to hear your version of events. Mm -hmm. And then I can say to you, Hey, did you read the notice? Hey, yeah. did you look at the section of the app? And that's, and people will tell you the people that become my clients are the people that say, Hey, I just don't want to do it on my own. They're yeah. not the people sure. that, Hey, you know, read the notice for me. It's not like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I guide them to read the notice. So I don't, I can blab and blab, but really it comes down to, Get the information, get informed. And if you don't want to, hire mm -hmm. a property manager. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to take a step sure. further. Sure. Okay. I think that if you wanted to, if you don't want to hire a property manager, hire a paralegal and yeah. get them involved with the signing of the documents. Make sure everything's in order, even with the people coming in. Even have a paralegal, like have a Zoom call with the tenant yourself and a paralegal when they're signing the paperwork and that they understand what that lease really means, right? Because most yeah. of the tenants aren't even reading themselves. Never mind, the landlord's not reading it and then the tenant's not reading it. So no wonder they're in trouble. No wonder they have problems, you know? You know, it, 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 these situations that I'm seeing don't have to happen. Okay. No, and again, right. I mean, paralegals are not meant to do preventative measures. And yeah. it, it makes me sad because I, I could provide a lot of preventative measures for I know. you. I um, know. But uh, that's not what a paralegal is for. So, uh, so in, in, do, in t saying that, what I want to say to people is ultimately take the courses, ultimately mm -hmm. talk to people that know um, and get the information. And really half, the, I'd say more than half of the cases that I'm seeing that go to, that used to go to the board, even the ones we're doing on emergency, uh, yeah. Yeah. they should have never gone there. This could have been a simple discussion, mm -hmm. uh, negotiation or mediation. And I know some great mediators. I, I'm actually a certified mediator myself. Mm -hmm. It's part of my practice, but I know people that are just mediators and that's all they do yeah. all day long. Yeah. Uh, so talk to people, get the information and, and really think about, think to yourself, is it worth it? Because mm -hmm. like I had a couple of people call me today. Hey, Samantha, I just want to issue notices against this person. I said, okay, first of all, do you need to issue the notice right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. There's no board. Yes. So um, unless it's an emergency, yes, you should have the paper trail, but understand that if you have a, a tenant that's paying your rent, mm -hmm. it's an issue that should be brought up right now. Can it yeah. be dealt? Can it be dealt with when we know when the board is open, so you don't open a can of worms? Maybe yes. just think about that. Balance mm -hmm. it up. Yes. Yes. Worth it this time. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. But you're right in everything you said. And I, I just echo, I echo it because I, I feel it and I'm seeing it and I'm living in the trenches. Like I'm seeing I it. I know. I know you are. The other thing too that I'd like to see in the future and what happened with my last, um, you know, um, deal that I had with my paralegal was that people, she actually got in there to negotiate for me. So sometimes it's best that the paralegal negotiates for us. So yeah. then they're talking to a third party that has that, they're, because they're obviously not listening to you. So I can see the paralegal going more into the mediation part of this too, Samantha, in the future. That's where I see things moving along for you guys, getting more and more into this at a different level, because yes. it's too difficult. The landlord and the tenant is too difficult to do sometimes. So, so it's interesting because I, I actually teach ADR. Um, okay. I've, I've been teaching it for quite some time. And yes, again, I am a, I am a mediator myself, uh, mm -hmm. but I practice it within my firm, within the course mm -hmm. of litigation. Or I, mm -hmm. I tell people, hey, maybe you bring me on as a mediator as opposed to a, a, your, your, your paralegal. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to say I agree with you because most cases can settle and have settled. Mm -hmm. In any yeah. court setting, I, I, that's what I do here. I'm able to mm -hmm. settle most of them. Mm -hmm. And then they, if they have to go to litigation, they have to. But Ultimately, I see the legal landscape going that way too. Um, yes. I see the board is going to, unless they have a plan, which I don't know if they do, to be honest, nobody knows. It's a secret. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the way I see it is when this board opens up, how yeah. are they going to deal with all the backlog that they had before yeah. COVID? That's yeah. the first part. Yeah. Um, and then now they have to figure out, well, now we have all these applications that are piled up that have been yeah. made into us. We need to get adjudicators. We need yeah. to actually increase the amount of people. And they've saved money having the board closed. Hire some more adjudicators. I know they brought up four new adjudicators, um, but they need more. There's yeah. there's going to be a massive backlog. And people, I hope that we're not looking at another six months to get an order on arrears. I hope not. Because that's what we were seeing before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that might be the truth, which I don't like at all. I don't no. like that for my poor landlords, my poor landlords I feel so yeah. sorry for them. I really yeah, do. I do, I do yeah. too. So again, maybe yeah. you look at other options. You look at rent. Mm -hmm. You look at other things that can like, the, yes. and I, maybe I should reverse this and talk about it from a tenant. Side. I'm not a tenant litigator. Like I have, mm -hmm. I have a litigator that does that. I mm -hmm. also have a good friend who uh, has a website called eviction sucks. Um, yeah, and, I love that one. <laughs> right, but, he, but he represents tenants and that's what he likes to do. And that's okay. So from the tenant perspective, and I know tenants probably watch this show and that's perfectly fine. I'm, not a, so. I'm not a tenant hater. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a tenant hater. I was a tenant once too. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just say it to the tenants. Look, do you want to have the ability to to leave on your on good terms and on your terms, on balanced terms, actually? Yeah. You know, dealing with your landlord, working with your landlord is the solution. Mm -hmm. And if your landlord's the one being tough, well, yeah. then we have a different situation. Mm -hmm. Then you, but ultimately, what I'm seeing is the tenants are not working with their landlords. No, oh, well, not at all. Not at all. It's COVID, so I have the upper hand. Well, yeah. you know, what? Yeah. that's that's right. But when the board opens, yeah, then what's going to we'll happen? Have get evicted. Why do you yeah. want that? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I know. I know. Well, you know what? Myself as a landlord, the first thing I'm going to ask them is, "Have you been paying all this time during COVID?" Simple question. Have you right. been paying? You think I want them in my house if they haven't been paying? This, no. You know what? This is that that the uh, the amount. I hope again. I hope the landlords have gotten smartened up by all of this. I hope yeah. that they don't choose these people again. Because you get rid of one devil, you invite another devil in. And when I say that, I don't mean that facetiously, because you could be yourself even as a tenant. Are you going to choose the same kind of landlord that you didn't like, didn't work with? You know, a slum landlord? I mean, maybe you have to look at your parameters a little bit different, spend a teeny, teeny bit more money and go for a really good landlord that will take care of you. It yeah. works both sides, you know. This is a two-way street. I agree with you. I agree with you. It, I think the best, and I look, my, my, my parents have had tenants for a long time. Like they have, they, I, I don't want to call them lifers. They're not lifers, yeah. but they've been there yeah. a lot. Like yeah. it's multiple <laughs> tenants and they stay because really my parents work with them and they work yeah. with them. Of so course. it comes down to, I would say to my, the biggest advice would be communication is key. And some, you know, it's not about pride. Set your mm -hmm. pride aside for the landlords that are not being paid rent. Why have you not issued an N4? Why have yeah. you not still followed protocol? Mm -hmm. I understand there's no board. You still need to follow protocol. You yeah. still need to document, document, documentation, yeah. conversation. What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's the biggest thing. Fill it out, fill it out correctly, serve it correctly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. me, you know, again, Maria, you said it, it comes down to maybe the, the tenant just doesn't want to talk to you. Maybe they're afraid you're going to judge their situation. Yeah, um, of course. You know, they're, like, they're, under, they're under stress. Yeah. Like, everybody. I, you know what? Yeah, everybody is. They're afraid. I mean, who isn't afraid, right? So if we yeah. can understand that, it's just, you know, just work with them. Like myself, I have had tenants for three years in one property, great tenants. And they said, because I wanted to rent some of the other uh, rooms in the house, they said, please don't because it's very dangerous. I said, okay, I won't be showing the house at all until we move along a little bit more. So I just started showing it last week, but for three months, I haven't showed it because they asked me not to. So I respected them. They were, they're a good tenants. They pay on time. They keep the house clean. Why wouldn't I respect what they're asking me to do? You know? Yeah. So, and yeah. they always say, Oh, thank you so much for taking that into consideration. So when they're, when they're, when they're doing anything, they know I can negotiate with them. My office is open to negotiations. So I always leave it. If, if something's not working, I'll say, okay, what would you like me to do? Will you help me here? See if this works or not. They're able, they, they're willing to work with me. So guess what? Happy relationship keeps going along. We understand each other. So I think that's a lot to do with it too, how you speak to each other. They've never yes. been rude. They've never been rude to me and I've never been rude to them. Never. Yeah, I agree I? with you. Uh, this is what I've been preaching every single day to to all my landlord clients, to anyone that calls me that's a landlord. Um, that's what I say. Exactly what you say. You know, yeah. is there a way we can work this out yeah. in another? Let's let's use alternative dispute resolution. Let's yeah. find another way. Um, at the end of the day, look, we don't know what the tenant situations are. Some of them don't tell us. And if it's yeah. if it, if I reach out to them and say, hey, you know, and I talk to them like a human being and take put because I don't have it. I my look. Look, I'm, I'm you're there to protect my evolved. client. You're, yeah. you're not emotionally involved, which is exactly the type of person you need in between two people. They're, they're yeah. not getting along. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. right. So that's oftentimes I have people, tenants say to me, hey, Samantha, you know, I lost my job. I'm trying to get money. I'm trying to find a way. And I say to them, hey, did you go to rent bank? Hey, did mm -hmm. you? you know, can you borrow money? Can you do a payment plan? Can you do something? Because what happens, and it's not my job to advise, give them legal advice. My, no. my job is to try to make sure that my landlord is still receiving some money because they're yeah. sitting there and some of them don't, they're going to lose their homes. They're going to lose their property. I, so I want I my landlord to have some sort of funding in their yeah. pocket. And, and look, it might not be all of it, but let's do, let's work together. Let's yeah. find a yeah. way. And I think that's important right now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know what? These are very critical times. We have to take critical measures. We have yeah. to think differently than we've been thinking up until now. It's been pretty easy up until now. And we've had plenty of problems up until now. Just think what's going to happen now, Samantha. Yeah, it, you know? it's a scary, it, it's scary. And um, I don't know what I, I'm not sure what it's going to look like. I actually won't be surprised if I start seeing more online hearings um yeah, i think I that's probably so. the best way so. to deal like i always said this before and i've been on other shows and they've mm -hmm. asked me hey samantha what do you think should change and i i always say if there's a way to do the n4 the non-payment or rent hearings um over the telephone or virtually or if there is no dispute and i know that there's this process that's been come that may come out or has come out um, in relation to the N4s, if there's no dispute, then it just simply either gets an order or it's a one-sided to just ask a landlord quick questions, then that will all be done on the phone or virtually. That's what I'm hoping actually happens. I think that the board doesn't need to have no. multiple people in a room. They only need the ones that are severe cases, N5s that have to uh, to deal with severe issues and the tenant applications, but they can turn a lot of it, they, they can adapt. The board can adapt, the government can adapt. And look, there's been papers written. I know Landlord Self-Help has sent in papers. Um, there's other advocacy groups that send in papers. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, we elect the government. But I have to say that what I'm seeing so far, I'm actually not unhappy with it. I think that the, the 184 is going to bring some amazing changes that people will be very happy about. Now, don't hold me to it just now because I don't want to reveal that. But that's what I'm seeing from the ones I've discussed with people. Okay. Um, okay. But let's just like people, I think what has to happen is these landlords need to understand. I don't even know if a landlords understand that there is changes coming. And it's funny because I was talking to my daddy's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they don't yeah. know. They don't know. Yeah. They, yeah. Unless mailed out to them 
because mm-hmm. people are there. Some people are not on the internet, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And <laughs> that's why the landlord self-help has a walk-in, um, not now, but they had a walk-in or a phone call because mm-hmm. they could get information over and people would use it. So yeah. I wish there was a way that um, the government could send like, I don't know, some kind of pamphlet to people and say, here go the changes. Cause yeah. people don't, they don't watch them. They don't know. No, no, no. That's the case. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of, again, communication. Right. Landlords, tenants communication, government and landlords communication, government and tenants communication. That's all it is, is communication. Find a way to communicate. Find a way to communicate. I mean, Take the social them. media, there's a, lot, there's a lot of ways to communicate with social media on all platforms. On all yeah. platforms. Yeah. yeah. Well, you really, uh, and uh, yeah, and it, it really, communication, separate the people from the problem. If anybody's out there that really wants to learn more about mediation, um, yes. a book I recommend, it's called Getting to Yes. I don't yes. know if people know that or getting to yes with yourself. That's the newer, uh, the newer book, but that's mm-hmm. actually the book that we use to teach students that are learning about ADR. Um, mm-hmm. We teach them mediation. So uh, well, getting to yes. ADR, can you tell us what ADR is? What is yeah, ADR it's, called, it's called alternative dispute resolution. Okay. And what it is it encompasses is not only it talks about negotiation, it talks about mediation mm-hmm. and it talks about arbitration. So I actually teach uh, what I teach in college to paralegal students is all, all about all three of them and then how to actually apply them. So I give them real world scenarios to app, to apply and I get them to do mock mediations, mock negotiations, mock arbitration so that they get a feel for it because mediation is something that is confidential and you will never, you will never learn about it. You'll never be able to sit in and watch unless you're in the case. And then you're like, what the heck is going on? I feel yeah. like, I feel like I'm being shafted. And I'll tell you, many people said that to me. I didn't expect that. I didn't know this was going to happen. Oh, mm-hmm. they sided with the other person. It's That's yeah. not what mediation is. Mediation is a third party that mm-hmm. is a non-biased person. And within the board, you have the option to decide if you'd like to have mediation. Mm-hmm. And I highly recommend it. The mediators are skilled. They've been there for years. And really, their job is to try to bring you to a middle ground. Yeah. You're not going to get everything you want in mediation. Mm-hmm. It's about yep. compromise. Mm-hmm. And so the mediators will try to separate the people from the problem yeah. and try to take you to a place where, hey, you know what? There's a lot of emotions here, but yeah. let's try to look at what we can do to satisfy everybody. Yeah. And you're not going to be 100% satisfied, but you will mm-hmm. be a lot, you will be, you'll be a lot more satisfied than you would with the decision of an adjudicator who may say, sorry, you're 100% wrong. Get out of my courtroom. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what they would say. I mean, but I mean, I'm so sorry. My mind is That's, okay. Okay. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It's okay. You're so funny. I'm sure you've had people tell you that all along, and everybody else too, right? Oh, well, no. you, see it. you see it with the self litig. Like you want, like when I'm at the board, I'm watching self litigants. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, did you just like say that to the member? You do understand who the member is. That's another thing. Getting to know who the members are. Why are you not reading their bios and learning about who they are? Like yeah. there are lawyers, they're, they're, uh, they, they could be paralegals. They could be people that in their, that have been in the profession in the rental industry for a very long time. Mm-hmm. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So when you, I hear people, oh, the, the, the adjudicator is biased. The adjudicator is not biased. The adjudicator is following a set, uh, the set of rules. Yeah. If you didn't read the rules, that's on you. So yeah. taking, <laughs> advantage, taking advantage of being able to solve the problem in a resolution that both parties can be happy with. And you can make whatever decisions you want in that room with the mediator. Why are you not taking advantage of it? Like, I don't understand. So <laughs> right? so uh, getting to yes, it's a great book. I'm not getting any, any royalties for telling you about it. Again, I use it uh, for my class. William Yuri is uh, one of the authors, uh, Getting to Yes with Yourself and Robert Fisher. Um, if you haven't read it, get yourself an ebook, get the one getting to yes with yourself. I think it was a free book on Kindle. Yeah. Go for it. Nothing yeah. Yeah. Goes. It's actually fun. It's real world, real life, uh, scenarios. They talk about negotiations in a setting where there is a war. Yeah, um, of course. Of course. I mean, we, I mean, that's the first thing you should be able to do and learn how to do. I mean, if you're going to be purchasing a house, don't you negotiate the price? I mean, I negotiate the price. I, I negotiate how much deposit I'm going to put down. I negotiate everything. So, I mean, I'm accustomed to negotiating. So when does anybody not going to real estate not understand we have to negotiate anything that's in real estate, you know? I mean, that's right. that's a business decision, right? I mean, that's a simple thing. I mean, business is full of negotiations. 
everything is negotiation. So you, why not become like, you, you know, we always think that we are great at everything we do. Like we're, we're our best cheerleader and that's great. I'm not saying that's bad. You should be your best cheerleader. Like you should be the number one cheerleader, but be open-minded to relearn or learn from others that may be more successful than you. So you can be as successful as them. And I, I see that. Oh, I'm a landlord. I know everything you do. Yeah. Okay. Then why are you in this problem? Why are you in this pickle? Why do you, why are you here at my office? If you, if you know everything. Yeah, yeah. So look, I can't I can't say that I know everything. I don't know everything, but I know what my craft is and I know what I know. And I know that my colleagues that are on your shows, Scott, uh, Howard, yeah. Bida, and there's yeah. some others, yeah. they know their crafts. They know what they're doing. And, you know, I can vouch for all of them because I, you know, documentation beats conversation. They have it. Right. They have it. Right. right. So, right. Yeah. and you do yeah. as well. You do as well. That's why okay. I would say this is a very trusted that, you know, the, the real estate media news network, it's a trusted source because you're give you're bringing on these experts that know what they are telling you. They Absolutely. are educated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and real estate media news network is it, it, that's why I formed it was to help the landlords. And the tennis, anybody, it's your number one source for all things real estate. So it's, you know, that's why I have experts like yourself coming on. I can't, I don't know everything and I don't want to know everything. That's not my business, but I want to bring people together where they can go to one source and find out all the information and watch all these great programs. So I'm going to, I have to let you go, my love, because you have another show to go on. <laughs> <laughs> You're just hopping from one fire to another one. But oh, we'll see you yeah. we'll See you next Thursday. And please, everyone, make sure you ask questions, bring questions on. We're here. We're waiting for your questions. So I think they're just being very shy. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's perfectly fine. You know what? If anybody wants to know, hey, what type of question should I ask? What can sure. I ask? Listen, ask anything you want to ask. And I, just a quick shout out here. I see some of my, I see some comments here. So I just want to say hello, okay. hello to one of my Amazing partners, Mr. Lester Bailey. He's out in Arizona. He's a great uh, former police officer, great individual. Uh, Nav, hello. Nav Taj, hello. Um, hello there to Scott. I see Miss yeah. Judith Shawnwald. Hello, hello. Yeah. Marianne Grande, who is a mediator. Um, and the others, Gordon So. The others that are have hopped on to watch us, I can see people liking it from your page. So Thank listen, you. if you don't know what questions to ask, because people mm -hmm. always say, hey, Samantha, you know, maybe I just don't know what I don't know. And I don't know what type of question to, to ask you. Yeah. Um, you know, ask me. Ask Maria. If we yeah. don't know, we'll find someone that knows. I can talk to you guys all about law. I can yeah. talk to you all about personal development. I can talk to you about business. I've been yeah. through it. You know, I failed. I've, mm -hmm. I've got back up. Uh, you know, wiped my tears and kept yeah. going and I'm still going and going and going. I've been in property management construction. Um, I, I have really a lot of things that I've done in my life and you know, I'm, I'm a young individual. People are shocked when they hear my age, but yes. you know, I've just, I've learned the hard way. And I, I always share my story on all the shows that I'm on. It, this is not an easy place. to. Be. It's not an easy place to be, but if you have questions about anything, real estate, listen, uh, we'll share. I'll share the story of my parents and, and how yeah. they were almost homeless. You know, they did, if they didn't get into real estate, they would never be where they are today. And it was my mom with a dream. She had a dream. You always say that I had a dream. She yeah. had a dream yeah. and yeah. it came to her on late night mm -hmm. television and it was the Beckley course. And if she did not take the Beckley course, yeah. you know, she says it to me, Samantha, I don't know if I'd be here where I am today. And, you know, I also uh, manifested where I would be and she's there and she surpassed her dreams. So I'm happy to share whatever it is that you guys want to talk about. But listen, this is a casual conversation about real estate, all things real estate, all yeah. things landlord, tenant and all things law and anything yeah. else you'd like to talk about. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Myself, I'm a real estate investor, but I also am a business development consultant, had a business in New York City, 1982. So I've been an, uh, an entrepreneur since 1982. So ask Amazing. me anything with business. Now it's all real estate, but <laughs> business is part of real estate, Samantha. So I thank you so much for being my guest. Have a great show tonight, my love. And, and you're an educator. Today. Don't forget that. Everyone knows Maria's an educator. So if you're a person that wants to educate others in your business, maybe you ask that, those questions. How did you do it, Maria? Let me, let me do things in a certain way, which is what Maria did. And you know what? She's been successful at. So you, you might want to take advantage of, uh, of her being here because she's got a lot of background and 
you don't even know the you don't even know the surface of it. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I have to I have to shake my head when I think of what I've done all these years since 1982. You know, and the changes I've seen because there's tons of changes that have happened in the business world and real estate world. So anyways, we we'll should see. Talk about, we should talk about some of those stories on the next show. I'd love to hear it. Okay. And I'd love to hear it. I'd love to know okay. more. Okay. Okay. You will. Anyways, take care. Have a great weekend. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everyone. Bye.